Now, opposition instructions are very important. I've been telling you I'm going to make a video about them for a long time, uh, and here it is. We're going to talk about when to use opposition instructions, how they should be used, and what you have to think about while you're using them. Uh, just for a little taste of what you're going to get, uh, we have asked Coach to come along and really show you how it's done. Come on now. He's over there. You just got to get a little closer. You just get... just. Keep on moving. You just get over there, you'll be fine. You just stand right next to him. That's that's not close enough. You gotta get closer. You keep going. You gotta have spirit. You gotta have fight. You gotta keep going. This is this is what it's all about. This is the entire game right here. You gotta get right next to him. This is what's gonna determine who wins this game right now. You get right next to that person. You make him uncomfortable with how close you are to him. So we're talking about opposition instructions. Just so you know what those are, you go into tactics, you've got your opposition instructions right here. And this is matching up against the other players on the other teams. I've been putting this off for a long time because I knew I would have to do a ton of research because this is not an area that I even use in my game nearly as much as I should. And that really harkens back to harkens, harkens. Oh my, Noah, like har back to this point that I want to make, that opposition instructions are for power users. And a power user in anything, and in Football Manager in this case, is someone who really intimately understands their team and is interested to really intimately understand their opponents as well. If you do not intimately understand your opponents or your own team, or, or you're not willing to learn in that case, then you can do a lot more damage to yourself then help. And you sure you can do one or two things in the opposition instructions without damaging yourself too much, but you can completely change the tactical style with which you play based off of your tactical instructions. So be careful, right? I mean, you've got to be like, you got to be like this guy. What's up? Now this guy we've met in another video before. He's the best football manager player in the world. That guy is the type of guy that uses opposition instructions to set up a pressing scheme against the other team. You might not be, and you don't have to be at that level, so hopefully there's something in the rest of this video that you will be able to take with you, even if you are not that guy. And we all want to be that guy. And once you get to this screen, there are two things. I'm touching the screen with my hand. There are two things I want you to think about. One, who are you doing it to? It sounds stupid, but actually look at the person you're doing it to, or tactically look at the position you're doing it to and decide whether the benefits outweigh the risks. And two, and the one you probably haven't really thought about at all, is who is doing it, right? Because if you have a tight marking on this guy over here, like that guy, right? Your center midfielder on the other side is gonna have nothing to do with whatever opposition instruction you're putting on the opponent's left wing. Now your right back is gonna have a hell of a lot to do with whatever opposition instruction you're putting on their left wing. So you better make sure they can do it. Now a general rule of thumb to find out who is going to be affected most on your team by an opposition instruction is to go into your own players, right? And click on that player. And then when you click mark specific player, the person that comes up in the top is going to be the person that, let's see how there's a line here, right? And it's because we're not up to a match yet that it hasn't picked a specific person that they would be marking. If a specific person pops ahead, pops up ahead of this gray line, that's the person that they are really going to be dealing with if you have an opposition instruction on them. So you need to be thinking about both those things at all times while doing this. And then what can you actually click? Because I mentioned you can do it for specific players or specific positions. You should always be keeping an eye out for the opposition changing their tactic as you go through a match. Of course, that can happen all the time. But what you also need to consider is maybe just as part of your tactic, you want to actually do something to a certain position on their team all the time. And I'll see a lot of people say you can click this little button here. Uh, and it applies to all players at that position on the team because you want to do something to the opposition fullbacks all the time. And you can do that, but it sets as a default to just working with the player, which is something you need to be careful with because as the other team makes substitutions, those players can disappear. So if another player comes in to do the exact same thing 
and you didn't have it set as do it to everybody at that position, well, all of a sudden that instruction goes away. Your type marking is gone. Dude's open, goal is scored. You're sad, tears everywhere. Your girlfriend leaves you. You start eating a bag of chips. You get, you really kind of, you start gaining a little weight that you, you can't force yourself to go out and run because you keep losing on Football Manager. Uh, and eventually you just end up in a really comfy gaming chair like this. And I, I guess it's really not all that bad. On that note, if you feel like you're learning something in the process of learning something or, or mildly, mild, mur, mildly entertained, there's a button down there. It's the subscribe button. If you hit it, I'd be very grateful. Over half of you that watch these videos don't hit it. You know, it's like the Michael Jordan meme. Uh, Reese, put me in that face for a second. And I, I did take that personally. So if you could hit that button, the like button as well, and there's a little bell so you get a notification because we don't have set days for publication anymore that you can just hop on the next Zealand video because mostly hot fire. I'll admit, sometimes we miss. There's also some merch down in the description and the link to the Twitch stream if you want to hang out with me live. The merch came out on the stream a long time ago. It's very comfy, but I like forgot to put it under the videos until now. So they're really cool. Zealand stickers on the way soon, which I can now cover my computer in. So type marking. Type marking is the one I get asked the most questions about, and it's worth saying immediately that you should not use type marking on everybody, unless that is the way you want to defend, because you're going to give too much space to the other team. Type marking is a connoisseur's trick. You need to do it to one, two, three people, really. And if you're going farther past that, you need to really, really, really feel comfortable and know what you're doing. Because if you are following everybody around in a type marking sense, not only can I guarantee you the, the players on your team don't have the marking and physical ability to take all 11 players on the other team out of the freaking game. It, it, goalkeeper on goalkeeper marking? Is that what I just suggested? I think so. But it just creates more space for the other team to move into because if they just happen to get a step on one instance, there's nobody there to account for it. So you should not be tight marking everybody. It's just that's not a feasible way to go about it. So then who do you mark tightly? Well, there are a couple of people that are right off the top, somebody that you do want to mark tightly, and those are very threatening offensive players. So threatening offensive players. You also want to consider tightly marking attacking midfielders if you don't have a, a defensive midfielder, because then they'll just sit in that space. They're going to wreak havoc. So those are two types of players that almost in all cases, there is some justification for tight marking as long as there's a player around them that is going to be able to match them physically. Or say if you just have, if you have two center backs that don't have good decision and anticipation marking right then maybe you don't want to do type marking we can get to something that you can do to these attacking players down the line but if you do have players on your team surrounding these players that have like a decent set of marking and positioning and they're intelligent and they pay attention you get the concentration the decision making they're able to keep up with those players then it's something that you want to go to because it's going to be very ineffectual if you are trying to shut down a striker with type marking and that striker is able to win aerial duels kind of muscle you off the ball go sprinting by the center back you're telling to tight mark that person uh, and your center back or midfielder is just not good enough to keep up with that there's also another type of player that you're going to want to consider tight marking and those are the types of players that don't have good athleticism and dribbling but are very dangerous when they have the ball because if you have a player that is good at marking and is able to win the physical tussles against those people maybe this is someone like a wing maybe this is a specific fullback maybe it's a defensive midfielder who just keeps wreaking havoc with long balls you set a tight marking onto this person you can really attempt to take them out of the game because they don't have the athleticism and the dribbling to burn the player that you have tight marking marking them or players you have type marking them, then you can. You can take people out of the game with type marking. And if you've got some 40 year old wing who just sits out there and pumps in crosses, freaking tight mark him, take him out of the game. Problem solved. At the very least, this can force these players to move into less dangerous positions uh, because they just aren't able to get the ball in their more advanced positions that cause problems. But that's really it. There's no using tight marking against, you know, a lot of the backline players going to drag you too far out of position because this player in defense is really going to be shadowed by somebody all the time. And I cannot stress this enough. If they are not a physical match or a mental match for the person that they are trying to tight mark in that area, likely and you can watch it that's why it's a good idea to play on extended highlights because you can get a feel for this early in the game oh he's losing him a little bit here you want to take it off or maybe hit it to never which is what we're going to talk about next when to not tight mark people the opposite like that right there <laughs> 
and you can almost invert the things that we're talking about in your mind now. So if you really want to tight mark somebody that's a good playmaker, but that you can kind of physically dominate or that you're so good mentally in terms of marking and positioning and decision making that you're able to just be in the right spot and force them to not do things. Well, then who do you want to never tight mark? How about somebody that is just much more athletic than anyone you're going to have near them defending them? Yes. This can prevent your team from giving that person space to move into and instead kind of zone out that space so that this person doesn't have as much of a chance to take the space. Whether they're good at dribbling or they're like a poacher that's good off the ball, you can sag off them. And just as you want to try and smother people that you feel like you can dominate physically, if somebody else is dominant physically, you can sag off of them and hit a never tight mark. If you tight mark them and they dominate it every time and it's pretty extreme, you can drop off. So if they have a target man that's looking to hit a flick on, if you don't come forward to challenge that target man because you're going to lose anyways, guess what? Flick on's off. Then there's the fact that you won't want to close down guys uh, that suck. So if you've got someone that has like a poor first touch or someone that has poor creativity, you can sag off them while tighter marking to other people to force your opponent to play through somebody like a box to box midfielder that they might not want to play through instead of their playmakers, their wingers or their striker. So like my boy Fang Ping here, I'm sagging off, right? I, I don't need to deal with this guy because he's not going to hurt you nearly as often. He's got poor first touch, got poor creativity. But it's at this point that we start to get into some combinations with things like, well, you want to do tight marking and tackling or never tight marking and then closing down and those sorts of things. So we'll be moving on and we'll talk about those combinations when we get to them. And that next step is closing down, which is probably the most memeable one where you're trying to close down on somebody that's already injured. But who do you want to use closing down against? Your brain's probably already thinking about the types of players that you would want to go after. And obviously it's the ones with poor mobility, poor dribbling ability, and poor control, especially if these players are a threat. If your players in the area have good work rate uh, and aggression, and they're willing to get in there and to continue the press, they've got the stamina, right? In those areas, it's gonna allow them to do this for 90 minutes or 45 minutes. If they've got poor control, mobility, and this is where we kind of bring focus into play too, bad concentration and composure, but they're dangerous. Maybe they've got good long shots. Maybe they're good cross or good passer. You can wanna close those guys down if you don't wanna commit to marking them. Also, if you find players with a player trait that means they're gonna try and hold the ball a lot, closing down is a very effective thing to do. I'm talking about if you find a player you have know, stops ball, dwells on ball, those are the types of players you want to go after. It's rare, but you can go after them with this trait too. And closing down much more so than tight marking allows you to accommodate for your own tactics pitfalls. So if you are a narrow tactic, say like a four, uh, let, let's cook up a tactic like this one, a four, one, two, one, two tactic. Then you want to have the close down on a wide midfielder, on a fullback, because you're going to give them only attacking fullbacks in this case too much time on the ball because you're outnumbered in that situation. So having the close down is going to eventually drag a midfielder over there that's going to be able to take away some of that time on the ball. It can accommodate for that tactic. Now, if I end up going with a tactic that looks like this, well, then you're going to have want to have a close down on the wingers just inherently, no matter who they are or what they're doing, you want to have that close down in because it's just going to tactically help balance yourself out. But on the other side of this whole tactical array, not defending, but attacking, if you're a high line, high pressure team, you can find defenders with poor focus. So that's concentration and composure. And if you find defenders with that, defenders, of course, that have poor first touch, you can attempt to set a close down on those particular defenders maybe it's one center back who's just pretty bad and force more mistakes or at the very least force them to get rid of the ball quicker which is more and more likely to give you the ball back and if you're already the better team setting a close down on a lone striker that doesn't have any attacking midfield support is an excellent way to keep them from holding the ball up especially if they're a super physical player you don't want to tight mark them you just want to close them down get on them quickly once they receive 
receive the ball and try and get them off it. And the last danger to consider is that this works a lot the same way as tight marking and that if you have closing down on everyone, what's gonna happen? You don't even need me to tell you at this point because your your brain's already kind of getting there. But if you have closed down on everyone, every time somebody gets the ball, you've got, you know, all of your players are running into position. You're gonna be opening up spaces for other players to get open. You want to use this sparingly just like tight marking, or you can counteract it with not closing down or a never in this category. But when would you do that? Well, there's actually a huge obvious reason to do this. And it's pretty, it's a lower league reason usually. You ever run into one of those guys that's really fast, a good dribbler, but he can't really do anything once he gets there? Never close him down, put a never on there. Because their only way that they're able to do anything is if they completely get by you. So just don't give them the chance. You wanna not close them down at all because they don't have the passing ability or the crossing ability or the long shot ability to screw you for doing it. So just back off. There's players like that, I mean, at every level. And again, to accommodate for maybe you checking other people, if you're playing a team that's got four attacking players and three of them are really good and one of them sucks, somebody got hurt, it's a youth player up there, don't close that guy down. Put a never on him so you can focus on defending everybody else. But again, you don't want to never everybody the same way as you don't want to always everybody when it comes to closing down because all of a sudden you're just letting everything happen. The combination here is that you want the always closing down down with the never tight marking for players that have poor control they've got poor dribbling they've got poor mobility but they're kind of dangerous you have a never tight marking end and always close down you allow them to receive the ball and then just take it from them encourage the opposition to play through them and then make them less effective on the ball this brings us to tackling because this one is also part of the meme of trying to injure people got yeah, you can you can tackle hard like easy normal or, or hard normal is just essentially where we're at right now uh, hard and easy are obvious you're either going in real hard or you're going in real soft and you're not really diving it at all and you're kind of just like you weren't going hard in the paint yeah now easy on tackling is pretty similar to never closing down you're only really going to use it against people that have got good mobility good dribbling because you want to make sure you give yourself enough space to deal with that player properly it makes it more difficult for those players to like draw a foul too so normal's not exactly the same like if you have get stuck in as a whole team putting somebody on normal means like let's go after this guy a little bit less but who really cares about that it's such a specific situation. But hard tackling, you know this. If somebody has already got a bit of a knock, hard tacklings give you a much better chance to knock them out of the game. And if it's a vi it's a video game, we can say that with it being okay. <laughs> but what you might not have thought about is that against players with bad morale, it's pretty effective. Not pretty, it is very effective to go hard tackling against a player with bad morale. So you got that one jack wagon with the extremely poor morale. Well, guess what? You can hard tackle that person. It's gonna make them less effective when they receive the ball, especially if it's a good player that like wants to leave. He just doesn't want to deal with it. And it also works much the same way in closing down to people that are great playmakers. They've got the creativity, the crossing, the passing, but they're not as mobile. They're not as good at dribbling as the people that you have around them. Why would you want to do harder tackling instead of closing down? Because closing down it's more about the the work rate and the stamina and getting into those positions where the harder tackling is the once you're there you're going to go for the tackle you want people with that aggression with that tackling ability with that toughness to get in and actually win the ball you know with the composure to get the job done balance and strength are also important to consider uh, for tackling in particular. So if you got a strong defensive midfielder, use the tackling. Even they don't have to be strong. They could just have good anticipation. That makes them a good tackler too. Not if they have one tackling, but come on, use your brain. And then you can also use tackling in combination with somebody that just has the poor, the, the guides I read, they call it endeavor. Poor endeavor, it's the aggression, bravery, determination, and work rate. These people that they just aren't as committed to the game. They don't fly around as much. So if you have a never tight marking and an always hard tackling, you allow them to receive the ball and then you're able to take them out of the game and make them very ineffective. Also helps if they're weak. So high strength could cause some problems there, but just get rid of that. Maybe don't, don't hard tackle somebody with great strength unless they're hurt. 
then tackle away. This brings us to the last one, which is like show onto foot. Uh, you've got your left, right foot, and weaker foot. Now, there's a very important thing to keep in mind is when you click on a player, go to development and tactics, and you're able to see the footedness of a player. So a weaker foot might still be pretty strong, which you're not going to accomplish a ton if you do that. So if you're planning on closing down a fullback because they're really annoying, make sure that it's not this guy because then he'll bring it into his left foot, which is really good, and he'll have a much more open lane to get the ball in you are looking to take advantage of people for either tactical reasons or for just being bad. So first for the tactical part of it, it's showing players onto their right or left foot, right? You can be attempting to play into your tactic, either forcing people out into the channels out wide or forcing people towards the middle where you have a lot of numbers uh, where you can actually go to say the right wing of the other team and say force them to use their left foot make them come inside now you've got to take a lot of things in mind here like i wouldn't do that on this specific situation because it looks like their right back is going to be very aggressive in this game and i would essentially be opening that lane up for the right back to come in over the top and cause problems for me uh, what I think I'd be more likely to do tactically is to force players outside. If I've got a big physical defense that just doesn't lose a lot of aerial duels, which it's possible to win all of your aerial duels and cover all your crosses, then you might want to force people outside, especially if the winger themselves is not a great crosser. You can go to the right wing and say, force them onto their right foot. Do not let them, maybe they're an inside forward, get inside. It'll make them just go to the outside and you'll be able to deal with it out there. Those are the tactical reasons for this. And obviously this can apply all over the field. I'm just using the wing as an example because I'm not trying to make an hour and a half long video. Just think about where you want players to go in a position. It can be uh, an attacking midfielder who's a shadow striker who's coming up one way, you want to force them the other way, right? Or an advanced playmaker that you want to face a particular part of your defense because they're better. And maybe on an advanced playmaker, you just want to show them onto their weaker foot. It, showing onto weaker foot is like tackling something that you can actually put on a lot of people where pressing and tighter marking drag you out of position tackling is when you're already there uh, and show on to foot you can have that on a bunch of people because it's once you get there what are you doing instead of getting you there in the first place and so show on to foot showing to weaker foot uh, takes away the ability to shoot to pass uh, and just to cause problems especially you know, if the person's got a really strong one foot and a really weak other foot and of course the weaker foot instruction can play into the tactical idea like the weaker foot button can be used to take wingers and drive them inside so they can't cross to say a great target man who's dominating your center backs right or there's a one midfielder or two are causing problems or maybe everybody on the entire team you can have a weak foot instruction on and it'll make sense the better your own players intelligence and particularly teamwork is going to apply how well they do in turning these people onto their weak foot but you can have one on every single player on the team if you want to you just have to think about the knock-on effects where are you forcing players to go and who's going to be doing it right maybe it's just not going to be effective you want to you know never close down and try and get yourself in position to block off a very talented player with the ball from going anywhere that's all up to you. And that's the sort of decision I feel comfortable saying you are now allowed to make because people have been asking me for this for a year. And we've just sat down and talked about everything in opposition instructions to give you a full idea of how they affect things. Be very careful with tighter marking in particular and then closing down when it comes to dragging people out of position. Football Manager 2021 is better than 20 in terms of players dragged out of position, but it's still not perfect. And you can easily be overzealous with the tighter marking stuff. You have to know that you're going to be able to cover the space created and be very careful doing a tighter marking or a closing down that you know is going to involve just your center backs. May I recommend perhaps a, an individual player instruction on your own team to just, I don't know, tight mark somebody? Just mark that specific player. If they've got two strikers and they're driving you nuts and nobody else is making a run through the middle, that's the answer, not this. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you on stream.